After arguably the most transformational year in recent history, I figured I would continue to play that fool's game of trying to predict the future. And in this video, I will talk about my top five predictions for 2021 in the retail commerce industry. This is actually the third annual list that I've put together on some of these forward-looking predictions in the retail slash commerce industry. If you're interested in maybe how I've done on some of those predictions, you guys can look at a recent post that I just made recapping the prior two years on my Instagram. You just need to search my name, Joshua underscore Shawl. And while you're there, give me a follow. I would appreciate you guys following me on some of my other social media. And just like some of these other predictive year-end videos, the only rule I kind of have is that I do not carry over any of those predictions. That is to make these lists more interesting, also to make them more difficult for myself. And then for retail industry ones, commerce industry, I take bigger swings. And that's mostly because I'm not a traditional retail analyst, though as a strategy consultant, I deal day in and day out with retail and commerce. I'm not traditional analyst or pundit. I don't talk about this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. So I like to make these a lot more complex puzzles. Maybe you guys can see how I think about things, even if I don't get them correct. Maybe it just inspires some people to think about the industry differently. So without further ado, in no particular order, these are my top five retail slash commerce industry predictions for 2021. The first one is going to be that grocery stores and farms converge. So you might be thinking to yourself, Josh, is this just farmer's markets? These have been around for a while. Why are you bringing this up? And though that's partially true, kind of just kind of listen to me a little bit longer and maybe you will make a little bit more sense of this. This is going to get a technological spin to it. The grocery business as a whole is low margin. It's been low margin, it's very competitive. Now, if you throw in grocery e-commerce, that is definitely not margin accretive. So these businesses, though they need to offer grocery e-commerce, they are not from a profitability standpoint actually benefiting from this, especially in the current iteration of grocery e-commerce. So because of that, grocers need to get consumers to opt back into the traditional business model. So they need them to come to the store, they need them to be the pickers, the packers, the last mile delivery drivers, because that is a more profitable model than them having to outsource those or build in those capabilities themselves. So. Grocers as a whole need to create more compelling experiences. You've heard this before in retail, but grocers have not had to do as much, I guess, as other categories of retail because there is a lot of differentiation to the in-store experience already over e-commerce, but that is kind of stripped away. A lot of people have trialed grocery e-commerce this year. They've enjoyed it. They've realized the positives to it. And because of that, Grocers are going to need to think about compelling experiences. And what's more compelling than picking your own produce from the vine? So I believe grocers will start to partner with vertical farming startups to provide that within the store as they reimagine what the future of their physical locations will look like. Ultimately, I think this goes in a direction away from experiences. I think there will be some premium grocers that will continue with these experiences. But I think Walmart, Kroger's, Albertsons, what Amazon's doing, they're gonna go fully autonomous, fully warehoused type of an experience to create those efficiencies to make grocery e-commerce profitable. But for the other grocers, or even these grocers I just mentioned in the short term, they're gonna be looking at experiences and vertical farming could be one of those experiences. So I think after COVID kind of gets cleared up in the back half of 2021, you're gonna to start to see some announcements. I think at the beginning, it's gonna be slow because people don't want you to be touching things more than you need to. So anything to bring more customers into the store maybe is not the best idea currently, but I expect if COVID does, and that's a big if, I guess, gets cleared up in the back half of 2021, you'll start to see some 
some announcements of major grocers and vertical farming startups and add in some of that experiential piece into their locations. The second retail prediction that I have is that Facebook will acquire Patreon. It's no secret at this point that Facebook wants to be a huge player within commerce, but also Facebook has been prioritizing human interactions. Um, they've changed up a lot of their models to create more communities and go back to how Facebook at least initially started. They had gotten a little bit away from that. Now, the creator economy as a whole has been exploding and Patreon is a major player within that. The buzz at this point, a lot of it gets towards only fans, but I think Patreon is a much better acquisition target for Facebook specifically. And Patreon also knows that the creator economy and the connection between these media Media properties, people thinking of themselves as brands and as media, and them needing to sell or monetize themselves differently. They realize that as well because they've actually made an acquisition in an e-commerce company as well to kind of add in some of those capabilities already. But Facebook has started their own kind of cloning of Patreon, trying to do some of those things already. I think they realize that they can't do it as well as just purchasing Patreon, so they're gonna be going after that. Shop attainment right now is going to continue to get huge. You're not aware of what that term means. It's the connection between entertainment, commerce, and content. This is very big in Asia. You see a lot of things with like live streaming, shopping and commerce there. That has started to come into the US and that's gonna be growing immensely in 2021. Facebook wants to ensure that they are the home for content creators that wanna monetize themselves. And with them purchasing Patreon, they're gonna be able to attach themselves to a lot of creators that are looking to monetize themselves and give them the tools that are well above and beyond what anything Patreon could give them and it would create a very compelling platform for these creators to start building their business off of. The third retail industry slash commerce industry prediction for 2021 is that Amazon's other segment, that revenue will reach $10 billion in one quarter by the end of 2021. Now I'm making this prediction before we even have the 2020 quarter four earnings for Amazon. And that might totally just screw up any models that I have. And if Amazon takes a bath in terms of that other segment, the advertising revenue segment in 2020 quarter four, I might look pretty silly making that $10 billion in a quarter prediction. And if somebody's not paying attention to Amazon's other revenue category and what the last previous quarter had produced, it was only $5.4 billion. So they would need to really accelerate their growth rates to be able to get to the number that I suggested. But if you guys are a subscriber or just a close follower to some of the content that I've created, you guys know that I did put out a video a few months ago on Amazon's advertising business capabilities, mechanisms, just all the different things that they have available to them or predictive things that I thought they would have available to them in the next couple of years. If you've not watched that piece of content, I'm gonna pop that one up for you guys right here. Make sure you guys click on that because I think it's a ton of interesting information there. But just to kind of expand on that a little bit, I think that 2021 is gonna bring a lot of differences or, or kind of strategic shifts for Amazon, especially in their retail division. I think you're gonna to start to see them look at smaller brands, give them the tools available to build their brand on the platform, not just sell products. I think because Amazon will start to lean more into third-party sellers and take a step back on some of their first-party wholesale agreements, they're gonna be okay with giving up a lot more data, a lot more first-party data. I think they also will start to try to push like the limits on like how long will a consumer want to stay on the Amazon website. Amazon has always been about efficiency. Get in, get out, buy what you can, one click, get out of there, optimize the revenue as quick as possible. But because Amazon is going to start adding some more like creative brand, like I guess like more top funnel advertising levers and mechanisms and also look at live streaming, number of other kind of content generated brand building tools and, and trying to sell ads off of those. I think they're gonna to try to push the limits on how long a customer is willing to stay on there, but also still be leverageable and easy to convert into sales. So you're gonna see a lot of changes I think happen 
with Amazon and the available tools they have in their advertising tool belt. And I think that's gonna produce a ton of results in the revenue perspective for Amazon in 2021. The fourth retail industry, commerce industry prediction that I have for 2021 is that Facebook, that's that name again, and Uber make a strategic partnership within commerce. After Uber acquired both Postmates and Corner Shop, they alerted to the retail industry that they are gonna go past just restaurant delivery and look at a ton of different marketplaces, a ton of different sales channels, retail partnerships, things that they could do and not only provide the third party backend delivery for them, but also some additional tools and additional resources for them to be able to leverage and grow their business the best they can in the current economy. As I mentioned in a few examples ago in terms of another prediction, Facebook, they really wanna be a big player in commerce. Facebook getting into commerce and focusing a lot of their attention on commerce is scary for competitors, quite honestly, because Facebook knows what you want before you even type it into a search bar. That is much different different than any other retailer, even somebody like Amazon. So that's scary, but also if Facebook gives these retailers the availability to sell on their platform much easier and those retailers be able to leverage some of like the search and discovery tools in a much easier way, not have to send them off platform or things like that that they're currently doing when they're utilizing Facebook for some of their advertising and also give them those capabilities of just having it tied to the back end with Uber and make sure that you can have those things fulfilled same day. I think it provides an extremely fascinating social website slash commerce website that's just kind of like put together in such a way that would be pretty seamless, pretty frictionless. I think this is as short-term futuristic as you can think about with just like social commerce and like how big social commerce could become. Uber's capabilities of doing also like peer-to-peer third-party shipping. They also have some bigger like logistic solutions as well, but the peer-to-peer delivery is also attractive to Facebook because Facebook Marketplace has been a big, at least initial driver, some of their commerce ambitions and Having that extra ability for peers on Facebook Marketplace to transact and also ship things without somebody coming to your house, I think would be something that they could monetize a ton of. Now, if you also think about just Facebook as a whole and having all of their messaging capabilities and having conversational commerce capabilities and having that just be kind of integrated into some of these retailers and them not have to build out a lot of those types of solutions, I think a lot of these things could be really attractive for a partnership and giving those retailers a streamlined ability to create sales. Now, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Obviously, these retailers don't wanna do that, but they also need to meet their consumers wherever they're at, and they need to be where those consumers wanna transact. And if the transactions are starting to happen on Facebook and Facebook's group of apps, those retailers need to be there. So I think a partnership between Facebook and Uber could be extremely interesting and one that I would have a ton of fun paying attention to in 2021 if it ever happened. And the final retail industry slash commerce industry prediction that I have for 2021 is that Costco finally bends the knee to e-commerce. Costco's business model is about discovery and in-store experiences. They want you to come actually into the store. They have used e-commerce for big ticket items like electronics, things like that. They also have a partnership with Instacart to handle their grocery delivery. But comparable to most retailers, they are really anti-e-commerce. But despite being anti-e-commerce, they're actually the number 10 biggest U.S. e-commerce website based on sales, according to eMarketer. I think somewhere around $11 billion they're doing in 2020. But if you paid attention to any of like the grocery, e-commerce, fulfillment options, curbside pickup or in-store pickup has been extremely important to a lot of their grocery competitors. So... You think about Walmart, you think about Target, you think about Albertsons, you think about Kroger. All of these major grocery competitors have had a ton of success and massive like year over year growth rates this year, especially this year, that's accelerated a lot of what was already happening before 2020. 
a lot of those retailers, they are ahead of Costco on these lists. So if you think about what Costco could do if they just had that capability, it could be transformational for Costco. And I think that though they've been hesitant and on every single conference call, they say, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. I think 2021, they finally realized we need to test this out. We need to figure out how to make this Costco-like, how to make this work for us. They maybe do some type of test or trial. Maybe they do a full rollout, maybe at the end of 2021. But I think everything just kind of culminates into Costco having to do this, uh, be that investors coming in, board members, somebody just getting in their ear and saying, hey, it's time. It's time, Costco. You're gonna need to bend the knee to e-commerce this year. I know you don't want to, but let's make this as Costco as we can. I think there is a way to do that. And I think that Costco will figure that out in 2021. What did you guys think of my top five retail commerce industry predictions for 2021? Do you guys have some interesting ones that you have thought about for next year? I'd be interested to hear about it. So make sure you guys are following me on some of my other social media accounts and engaging with me on some of the posts that I make about this content or if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you guys are leaving a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.